Gilgamesh, or Nimrod, who built the Tower of Babel. His tomb was found in Iraq in 2003. And his giant skeleton has been found and retrieved. Archaeologists in Iraq believe they found the lost tomb of King Gilgamesh, the subject of the oldest book in history, the Epic of Gilgamesh, written by Middle Eastern scholars 2,500 years before Christ, commemorating the life of the ruler of the city of Uruk, from which Iraq gets its name. Gilgamesh, also known as Nimrod. Now a German-led expedition discovered what is thought to be the entire city of Uruk, including where the Euphrates once flowed, the last resting place of its famous king, Gilgamesh. John Fassinger of the Bavarian Department of Historical Monuments in Munich said, I don't want to say definitely it was the grave of King Gil Gilgamesh, but it looks very similar to that described in the epic. In the book, actually a setting of inscribed clay tablets, the tablets say that Gil Gilgamesh was described as having been buried under the Euphrates in a tomb apparently constructed when the waters of the ancient river parted, flowing following his death. Fassbinder said, We found just outside the city, an area in the middle of the former Euphrates River, the remains of such a building which could be interpreted as a burial. He said the amazing discovery of the ancient city under the Iraqi desert had been made possible by modern technology. He adds, by differences in magnetization in the soil, you can look into the ground. The difference between mud bricks and sediments in the Euphrates River gives a very detailed structure. This creates a magnetogram, which is then digitally mapped, effectively giving a town plan of Uruk. It was a Venice in the desert. The most surprising thing was that we found structures already described by Gilgamesh. We covered more than 100 hectares. We found garden structures and field structures as depicted in the epic, and we found Babylonian houses. He also said the most astonishing find was the incredibly sophisticated system of canals, adding, very, very clearly we can see the canals, some structures showing that flooding destroyed some houses, which means it was a highly developed system. So why is it so interesting that his tomb has been found? It's interesting considering that Gilgamesh was believed to be part human, part alien, part angel. He was Nephilim, Anunnaki, Nephilim, fallen angels, the offspring of the fallen angels, as in Genesis 6, notably what we could call a hybrid. It's also interesting to note that Gilgamesh has been compared to and could very well be King Nimrod, who was the son of Cush and a descendant of Noah and the king of Babylon, the same Nimrod that built the Tower of Babel, translated as the gateway to heaven to defy God. And we mentioned this regarding the overwhelming amount of information that has come to light recently of DNA genetic manipulation and its use in science and technology even today. Was the Iraq invasion a forward smokescreen for the enablement of Western powers to gain ancient alien technologies and possible DNA for future engineering and a possible resurrection and cloning of a DNA angel, Gilgamesh Nimrod? There are those who believe that that is so. There are those who believe that there was a driving force behind the resurrection of Nimrod, Gilgamesh. That was the primary reason for the uh, East events. One month after archaeologists digging in her desert sands claimed to have found the tomb of Gilgamesh, just four years after the secret chambers of Osiris' empty tomb were found in Egypt. Behold, I have told you before, Wherefore, if this shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning come out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 
Matthew 24, 25 to 28. In our recent interview on uh, Omega Men Radio, Tom Horde and Steve Quayle talked about the discovery of that carcass of, of course, Gilgamesh, Nimrod, and they began talking about how Nimrod began to become a giant. And then they started talking about the discovery of Gilgamesh's remains, and Steve Quayle said, I talked to a special operations general who validated that, verified that, and absolutely was there when Gilgamesh's remains, and his words were, he was in a state of remarkable preservation. And by the way, that was in the literal vicinity of where the United States built its largest military complex. I believe it's one of the largest military complexes in the world. In that whole area, in that whole area, the advanced team special operations went in there to grab all that stuff. What I'm telling you is, based on multi-star general's eyewitness reports to me, who was there, he said, they have Gilgamesh's remains. So if they have Gilgamesh and he is Nimrod, they got it. The whole point is to extract the DNA. And I've also said, I've also been told that the whole point of the Human Genome Project is to locate specific genetic markers for the disembodied spirits to reanimate their host body that's brought back. So this is in fact Babylon Rising, the return of the Nephilim. And Steve Quayle goes on to say that he believes that this is indeed the real reason of remaining in Iraq for the better part of the last decade. The fact that U.S. troops are now coming back out of Babylon tells that's us that they have accomplished whatever it is they needed to do. Which makes us wonder what or who else may be coming out of Babylon with them. I'll leave a link below for you for these articles. Thank you.